Hello everybody, news from Egon. We haven't been just doing great trips together. Heiner and I have developed another product. It is called the Relay Hub. It's 2024. That means 40 years that I've been exploring the world's most remote places in four-wheel drives in association with the Overland Workshop. This is the most versatile switching system and it's been around a while because we wanted to test it very thoroughly and we have done uh, for over a year and I will leave it now to Heiner who has built numberless electrical systems in four-wheel drives, caravans, vans and trailers to explain it to you. With this Egan Relay Hub we've tried to solve a lot of problems that arise with installing relays and switching systems into vehicles in a very simple and compact way. And we try to only use components that are easily replaceable everywhere in the world. So the relays on here are exchangeable. They're standard automotive relays. All the cables that you need to hook this up are just multi-core cables like seven core trailer cable, uh, dual core cable, uh, twin core cable, everything that is everywhere available where electrical installations are being done in the world. If you want to integrate a battery box into your vehicle system and your idea is towards having a mobile system, but then you find that is a cool idea, but what if I have got some systems like roof lights, charging ports in the front of the vehicle, how do I integrate my wiring system in the car? into a battery box and still have the battery box removable afterwards well our relay hub is the answer to that the way to do this is you can use the big 80 amp connection on the relay hub to run a cable to a constant power output in this case we use the Klarman power station and connect it to the front panel with the Anderson plug as soon as you plug it in you supply power to this whole board and it works in a way that as soon as you put a fuse in here, fuse number one for example, you do give constant power output to this input slash output terminal strip. So you can now run a charge port in the front of the vehicle of circuit number one. At the same time, if you put a fuse in here, you can use the switched load output number one as well. So you add another few cables down here, ideally a seven core, because you have got five relays that you can switch on and off, and you've got power supplies to the switch panel that you use in the front. So that means power to the switches, five return cables. As soon as one of the return cables gets a signal, it switches the relay on, which then switches the load on, for example, your roof lights. And that way you can integrate five constant power and five switched power circuits into your vehicle and if you want to take the battery box out all that you need to do is as you can see the charge cable in the back and this is the connection cable for the relay hub you can plug them together as soon as you do that all the circuits in the relay hub now run off the start battery. So it means everything still works, but you can take your battery system out of the car, charge it, store it, whatever you do. And the next time you want to have your dual battery system installed again, you unplug the charge cable and the supply cable for the relay hub. You plug it back into the front here. If you're wondering, this is an ignition trigger cable because this is an Isuzu D-Max and it needs an ignition trigger for the DC-DC charger because of its smart alternator. You plug the charge cable back into the back and now your battery box slash power station is running the relay hub again. So all your appliances are running off the battery in the power station slash battery box and the charging in the back of this going to the DC DC charger is connected to the start battery again and you've got your dual battery system reinstalled in your car.
The thing I love most about it is to use this as an extension for a power distribution system like the DC hub. So in a really big installation, you get a power supply from your main power distribution into the power supply of the relay hub. And now the magic begins. You can now put a fuse in here, switch this relay from this supply here with a multi-core cable, and you can have the output on this side here and you switch a light from a switch or a remote control or a switch and a remote control. You can even switch it from a 12 and a 24 volt power source. And then if you don't just want to have circuits coming from your main power distribution, which is usually a house battery, but you want to also switch things from an ignition source, from the start battery, from an accessory circuit. You just leave one of the fuses out and you can now mix and match power supplies even different voltages some circuits can be 12 volt others can be 24 which is awesome in truck installations plus you got fault finding on the board if a fuse blows a light turns on when a circuit turns on a light turns on and just in case your switching fails you've got a backup override switch directly on the board it is awesome it makes our job so much easier all right let me interrupt you there Heiner. I I, want to, I think I need to explain why. How many of you have opened a bonnet of somebody's car and seen a relay over there, a relay over there, two over there, and another one over there, and just a mass of cables, and it looks like a bird's nest? Those of you who have wired a relay might always have to look at it and say, okay, what is the trigger? Where is my power in? Where is my ground in? And have to figure it out. That has come to an end. You don't need to do that anymore. This is like paint by numbers. The switching of these five relays, you just follow the instructions and run. All of the instructions are written here. It simplifies things so much to the point where you don't actually have to do a lot of thinking apart from where are you going to put it? Back to you, Hannah. Or you can switch your driving lights or you can have a feed from an ignition source that switches on things that you want to be running off ignition. For example, you could be using daytime running lights. You put an ignition feed in here, just to name a few. And of course, you can run water pumps, water heaters, uh, lights of all kinds, uh, whatever you can think of, up to 25 amp per circuit. It turns out that the Egon Relay Hub is actually far more versatile than we thought. So what we've done on the Egon YouTube channel, we have explained several use case scenarios and several wiring instructions. So you can follow through step by step on any kind of build that you're doing. Our testing period has been uh, well over a year, uh, including a fitted in both Heiner's vehicle and my vehicle during the canning stock route. But like all Egon products, the idea is to simplify things. You know, relays are not new. Wiring them up is nothing new about it. But here is an item, one item, where you can switch up to five accessories, high current accessories, and you can wire it yourself. And if you're in a workshop, you're doing this professionally for clients, it is going to save you, again, like the DC Hub, a huge amount of time. We reckon on, a, on the, the, the DC Hub, on a typical build, where you've got fridges, three or four lights, you've got a travel buddy, you maybe have a water heater, you maybe have a compressor, etc. The time saved in a workshop is anywhere between six and eight hours. So that's six or eight hours of labor saved. The Relay Hub is about the same. Another six to eight hours of labor because when wiring up these items, you don't need to uh, use any heat shrink. You don't need to use lugs. And the reason for that is that all the connections on both Relay Hub and DC Hub are clamp connections. It's not a wire with a screw going through it. That's terrible. This is actually better for a relay. You know, you've got all of these connections that you switch, you plug in. 
the, 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 there's little spade connections. Spade connections are not very efficient. But what we've done with the Relay Hub is we've used the best quality spade connection sockets on the board that we can find anywhere in the world. And you'll notice that when you put the relay in, it's very firm. It doesn't move about. If you are doing the wiring and you are crimping a spade connection, they are notorious for coming loose. Notorious. For, if they get slightly damp, and if there is not a good solid connection, you get an electrolytic reaction as the current flows through, and they corrode. That has gone. It is the end of that with the relay hub because the connection is of such a high quality and the clamps are actually, they're shaped like this and they actually grab the wire. You can make them extremely tight. In fact, on the instruction on the website, there are recommended torque settings for all of the connections on the relay hub. So again, it's a game changer in terms of simplifying switching currents in anything from a caravan, trailer, 4x4, or even, even a small home installation. I hope that helps you. Check out our website, egon.com.au, for more information, and all the videos on their website illustrating use, case, use cases and instructions on how to install it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.